Greetings, shit lords and shit ladies. This is Estacar. So, what does the Master Chief, Halo, Depression, and Motivation have in common? It's an odd question. It's almost something you might expect to come out of one of those New Age social justice -y critical theory classes, like the male equivalent of some feminist professor studying Fifty Shades of Grey. But, to me, meditating for the last 30 minutes, asking myself, what the fuck am I doing with my life? The topic is a bit less frivolous and more of a thing with direct, concrete consequences. I know many people have been in a situation where they're sitting at the base of a mountain and they're looking up at the summit. They know they can climb the rocky path that's ahead of them, but as they search mentally for something to grab onto to justify the conquest, they find nothing but air, so they stare at the summit and shake their heads and think to themselves, no, I'll just stay right here. I could get into the circumstances that have me in this current funk, but truth is, they're not relevant. Everyone knows the feeling, no matter what circumstances it takes to bring them there. When it comes right down to it, there's no fictional character that I can think of with a more extreme version of this mountain than the Master Chief from the Halo series. The issue of what motivates the Chief is an odd one. Here is a boy given very little in terms of positive incentive. He's been the recipient of brutal training, driven primarily by deprivation. There's no mention of recreational activities, a sex life, or even much in terms of accolades. And this is a man who puts himself through the ringer. As the events of Halo 1 are finally coming to, to be, the Master Chief's world has been shattered. All his friends, his family, in Spartan terms, has been killed, not even in battle that they had won, but rather in a crushing defeat in the Battle of Reach. A close friend from training, Linda, is on the Pillar of Autumn in the cryo chamber next to his, having received horrifying injuries, from which it is very likely she will never recover. So when Captain Keyes awakens the chief, and he discovers that an enormous covenant force is bearing down on them. The chief is facing an enormous mountain, with almost everything that is positive having been stripped from his life. And I imagine he knows that he will have to end thousands of enemy lives, and will have to watch thousands of his comrades die beside him on the battlefield. He stares up at that proverbial mountain, and he sees the cost ahead of him, and he doesn't even rest a single heartbeat before starting the walk up that long slope. Now, let me stress again, because I think it bears re-mentioning. The Chief has entered Halo 1 having lost, in the high 90th percentile, of his friends and family. He's fighting and ending the lives of enemies that have their own arrays of thoughts, dreams, familial bonds, and responsibilities killing these enemies with great efficiency and brutality, and through the events of the first Halo, he's fighting savagely against his enemies while his friends die one by one around him, and he must know in the corner of his mind that his team is losing this fight. I can imagine a great sense of futility, uh, the chief single-handedly winning battles, and yet looking behind him and seeing that he's lost yet more friends that his allied forces are but another man smaller, or maybe ten, or twenty, or a hundred. Almost every engagement he's in, even when he performs perfectly, the number of his friends that remain dwindles. His captain is eventually taken by the flood. The people who are relying upon him, hoping in him, he's failing each of them as their lives are erased, and he keeps right on going. But it even goes beyond just keeping on. At the closing chapters of the first Halo game, the Chief has even, even has the emotional resources to offer jokes, crashing the Banshee on purpose to get a rise out of Cortana, and keeping enough hope with him to come up with the suicidal plan to start a nuclear meltdown 
with a single hand grenade. The chief keeps humor and hope alive. And when he thought uh, his last hope, Echo 419, uh, went down from enemy fire, the chief manages to race his warthog to the last remaining docked fighter plane and escape, leaving his heavily wounded comrade, Linda, for all he knows, behind to die. She would, of course, survive due to some Halo lore retconning, the same retconning that kept Sergeant Johnson alive, mind you. But that doesn't take away from his emotional situation. And yet he, he continues right on. Now, Halo is a fictional world. I know that. But it doesn't matter. What matters is what those of us who've played the game take away from it. Even if no real Spartan 117 has ever lived and survived such, such extreme emotional tumult, we're still being offered an experience and being given a message from the game's creators, Bungie. So, yeah. I lost my job. Yes, I've been desperately studying to get skills so that I can have a future that doesn't involve minimum wage work. And yes, my desperate studying and striving has lost me a relationship with a girl that I loved very deeply. And she's probably off chasing some rich boys with cushy jobs or, or something. Uh, hell if I know. All of that's probably true. But when I'm here, sitting with a cup of coffee next to me, and I can't even bring myself to drink the coffee, uh, let alone open my laptop and read another 200 pages from programming textbooks, I can't bring myself to write that extra program, and when I can't bring myself to format my resume to make it that extra bit impressive after strings of interviews and rejections at programming uh, companies across the state, and I just want to collapse my bed. I want to close my eyes, I'll go somewhere else entirely, and, and give up. But if my mind turns to the events of Halo, the story of the Master Chief, it gives me something to grab onto, as silly as that sounds. Even with the character being fictional as he is, it makes me believe that perhaps there's something inside of me, at my core, that is strong enough to see me through this. Perhaps this chain of shitty events is what was needed for me to discover that core that resides within myself. And perhaps that core will help me do something worthwhile. I just hope that if I ever do achieve enough to justify my existence on this planet as just another one of billions of human beings, and that I can create something that will, you know, do some for something, someone, what Halo has done for me, an, an artistic experience, a something that carries that feeling, that message to fight on. So, if any of you are feeling what I'm feeling now, keep fighting. Keep cracking jokes. Keep hope alive. Find that core piece of yourself that refuses to give in. And feed that savage fucker scraps from your table un until you can summon that shit to make yourself unstoppable. And maybe, somewhere down the line, you'll find your opportunity to chuck a proverbial hand grenade into a proverbial nuclear reactor. I'm not telling you to fucking do that in real life. Like, let's be real. But something that will... That little bit of opportunity that will allow you to break through and make something worthwhile of your life by whatever definition you deem things to be worthwhile.